For urban households in Kenya, research shows that 50 to 60% of the energy bill goes to heat water. Energy needs with high power peaks in the mornings and the evenings often resulting in big power cuts. Everyone takes a shower. To reduce that problem, Kenyan government has decided all new urban buildings should be equipped with solar water heaters. Uh, and this is a good plan. And, and this will, of course, strengthen the re resilience of the energy system. But how about the rest of the population living in rural settings where just about 1% of Kenyan households are connected to the grid? living with no running safe nor running hot water at home but still have the same needs <clears throat> hot safe water is essential to daily life from washing hands preparing food cleaning the dishes to showering 90% of the households in, in Kenya rural areas use firewood or charcoal. And at least the, the last year with the COVID-19 pandemic, the restrictions, the poverty has increased and so has the use of biomass. And we, this screenshot, we wanted to show data from it's a, about Energy Access Explorer as it's an online open source interactive platform with data from key government agencies. And it shows the areas with the red areas with access to energy service and, and the blue areas where it's need to be expanded. It's quite obvious, the map. <clears throat> and half the world cooks with firewood three to four kilos to cook a meal on a three stone stove. And back to Kenya, yeah, only 6% of the land is forest. 35 million ton is needed to cover the fuel wood every year for the country and losing approximately 12,000 hectares annually. And the massive deficit in fuel wood supply uh, has led to high rates of deforestation, adverse environmental effects such as desertification and land degradation, droughts and famine, among others. Many re regions and communities uh, are de de decades away from a well-functioning infrastructure. And of course, this should, from a sustainability point of view, come from renewable energy sources. Yeah, we have all a need to stay clean and, and have a good health, even in tropical area uh, and tropical and arid areas. It is cold in the mornings and it's cold in the evenings and the need for access to hot and safe water is part of dignity of life. And to drink the morning tea and having a warm bath needs to have a fire on and, and someone has to start it early. And it's probably a woman, a mother. But there are tools to collect and store safe heated water. A thermos flask is, is, is necessi necessity for every family. And I'm often thinking on why the question, what do you use the energy for, is so seldom asked. The hot water usage is included in all parts of daily life from pre preparing and cooking food, making tea, taking a shower, washing hands and making the dishes and so on. <clears throat> and next slide, this is data from a Solvatten impact evalu evaluation study performed by Lutheran World Federation. And answers are given to the question, what do you use the safe hot water for? 
And the figures that tells us that drinking tea, uh, tea or coffee is, and, and also bathing, hand washing, and to speed up cooking has the highest scores. Interesting to, if you ask and have the answers. And thinking about electricity and uh, providing electricity to rural areas, it's with small solar home systems, mostly provides electricity just enough to have lights and some low voltage equipment, but it's not enough energy to run an electric water heater, a stove or, or a fridge or, or a kettle. And you, you, come, you still uh, live in, in, uh, in those tough conditions. Yes. And I, I think that the connection between the needs of the users and the enormous potential of innovation that could and should meet those needs and to, to ask and to listen and to use my experience and my imagination to understand the, the reality. This triggered me to cre create a solution and, and to give women a tool uh, to build independency and to release time. And, and the, of course, also to use the power of the sun and I created Solvatten, which is a tool to treat and heat water. And as David said, we have reached a huge amount of people from idea to reality. And Solvatten has today reached more than 80,000 families in, in 20 plus countries. And the, this is Solvatten. And uh, it's portable, it doesn't use batteries, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it is a synergetic effect. You, you fill it with, with dirty water, contaminated water, and you allow it to, to in the sun uh, for a couple of hours. And there is an indicator that switches from red to a green happy face. And the water can be up to 167 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it's hot for a, a family of five to six people on a daily basis, both safe and hot. And it will serve a family for many years and well kept, it will last through the childhood, we say. And important is that the quality of water also meeting WHO guidelines for safe drinking water there with the highest purifying level that treats both for bacteria, viruses, and parasites. I <clears throat> created Solvatin, a case that UV disinfects water. And clean water is poured through a fabric filter that catches large contaminants. Then, the case unfolds like a book, ready to catch the sun's purifying rays. After a few hours, a green smiley face indicator lets you know the water is safe to use. Ready for cooking, bathing, cleaning and drinking. With Solvatin, people can collect water from sources closer to their homes that they previously avoided because of how dirty they were, giving them more time to work and earn an income or go to school. Solvatin is simple, effective, and built to last. Yeah, for many years, uh, we have recorded the data from the users of Solvatin and the strong reasons for the high uptake and acceptance is that it improves health, it saves time, and it reduces costs. Costs that used to be spent on both fuel wood and high medical expenses. I want to welcome our long-standing partners, International Aid Services in Kenya, who can firsthand describe how their organization used Solvatten to improve the environment and the quality of life, especially for mothers and children living in rural Kenya. Hi, my name is Pamela Kiambi and I'm the Silverton lead volunteer working with International Aid Services Kenya in the RACA program. I'm a youth advocate, I'm a youth leader and have, have interest in um, environment 
Yeah, I'm an environment conservation enthusiast and I really love working with international aid services. Uh, thank you, I'm Bernard Omondi. I work with the international aid services as a program support manager. I have a, a higher diploma in project management and community development. I've worked with IAS for about 15 years now for Solverton. I have been overseeing the uh, implementation. This is, uh, which means uh, the receiving of the consignment, uh, consignment from the shipment and ensuring proper storage and the logistics of uh, the distribution. Sharaka is, uh, as I said, predominantly uh, arid and semi-arid, uh, which means it's quite dry and the temperatures are quite uh, high. So it's a hot place uh, having about uh, 35, 36 degrees centigrade. centigrade. And uh, the area is a, is a county that has a population of about 400,000 people. But then we work in the lower side of Tharakanithi. Uh, this area is, uh, is, is actually an area that suffers from a lot of uh, stresses because of the harsh climatic conditions. They receive, the area received less below normal rainfall uh, during the rainy seasons. And therefore, the area experiences a number of droughts. At least in every three to four years, there is a drought that occurs in Taraka, which means that the water is also limited. And uh, the little amount of water that is available is usually uh, a water that is not safe. So many people get their water from the rivers or some uh, springs or some boreholes that have been dug by organizations. The community has been, uh, has been told to be boiling water mm. uh, because of the dangers of unclean water. Actually, Taraka has had cases of cholera a number of times. And mm. because of that, uh, uh, the, the public health department has been creating a lot of awareness for the need uh, to make sure that uh, people consume safe water. And that they've been actually advocating for boiling of this water using the firewood. Currently, we are facing a lot of, uh, you know, like deforestation. We are facing a lot of uh, stresses or problems that are actually coming, you know, from the, 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 the environment. And we need to protect the environment. We need to protect nature because at the end of the day, we need it. We need to go back to it. And uh, for climate justice, we... You know, we need to practice like it could be smart agriculture, it could be, uh, you know, planting more trees and being able to protect uh, those forest areas that we have, like the, 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 the forest cover, increasing the forest cover to be able to build on, you know, to conserve the environment. So, so people are not connected to the electrical grid? Around 89% use uh, firewood for, for, for daily uh, cooking and, and other things that really need the fire and, and also 80% for, for charcoal. So generally you would meet like 97% would use uh, charcoal and firewood in, in, in our area, yeah. Uh, actually with, with, the, with the pandemic uh, that we have right now of COVID-19, you know, there are those restrictions that were given by the government uh, to ensure that we wash our hands frequently, we wear masks, we keep social distances and, uh, and so on. So part of the washing, the hand washing, in fact, uh, we took advantage of Solvater and in fact are now creating awareness that if you wash your hands with the hot water, it's uh, more hygienic than if you wash your hands with cold water. Mm -hmm. So Solvater is playing a key role uh, where fighting the pandemic is also concerned. Yeah, so this is something that we've actually seen. And uh, it has been a requirement in all the schools. Uh, you know, we have another project where we support schools with, with food, that uh, we have hand washing uh, stations. And um, most of these schools also have uh, solvent containers. So if they wash, the children wash their hands with hot water, then the hygiene level is higher than if they wash their hands with cold water. Maybe Pamela yeah, we, we've also seen it uh, if very effective in households where they receive visitors and they have this warm water they can actually be able to wash their hands with and, and soap so that they can, you know, restrict, uh, they can follow the restrictions that have been put across for prevention of COVID-19 
yeah, in the households, in even in the offices also and workplaces. <laughs> right. So now with solver time, there is the free sun that they can use now to boil. So this has been an encouragement for more people uh, to adapt to this idea of uh, boiling water so that they can consume uh, at least water that is, uh, that is safe. And then from the health department, they've actually recorded reduced number of uh, stomach illnesses, especially for the areas that we have targeted with the distribution of solvatin. So which means that the people that are using solvatin, now they have less cases of uh, stomach illnesses. Uh, this is confirmed from the records from the hospital uh, because they can see now that if, if people came, if 20 people came this week because of stomach illnesses, now we only had three or four mm -hmm. cases. So that is actually something that can uh, be seen. And uh, we are so grateful for that. Yeah. Of course, even talking about uh, post tree cutting, mm -hmm. uh, something that we've also seen is that uh, because of the use of solvatin, now they have hot water. So they use less firewood because with the hot water, uh, they can use less firewood to prepare food mm -hmm. because of the preheated water from the solvatin. Mm -hmm. So if they used to use uh, three bundles of firewood, now they use two bundles of firewood. So one bundle is like a hundred shillings. Yeah. So which means that they've saved 100 Kenya shillings every week for those that use Solvaten uh, consistently. Yeah. Many women have this uh, porridge. They, they, they have the porridge to feed the children. So they mix it with this warm water and they, they, they feed the children with it. So it's very easy for them to access this warm water very fast and feed the, 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 the children. Yeah, so it has been a benefit for them so, so much. Yes. That's nice to hear. And, and, and you said thermos flask. Are, are they easy available, the thermos flask, the people that's normally used in the household to use? Uh, a thermos flask in, in this area is a necessity because mostly you would find that they really need like warm porridge, they mm -hmm. need warm water, you know, it's a necessity. And they try so hard to have a thermos flask. You would meet most ho homes with a thermos flask. So it's really a benefit because even when they heat water with the, um, they have like the water from the solvent and they can have it in the thermos flask to last long, you know, while hot, yes. Uh, we are so happy for your time. And uh, this is, has given us uh, a, a lot of, uh, food for 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 the interesting conference that we are participating in. since many years we've been with the Stockholm World Water Week but it's also good to introduce you and, and to make people understand what's what's it's all about and uh, it's a big work you are doing and we appreciate very very much thank you we appreciate you as a the, the great support that you're giving us and uh, of course the contribution and uh, of this uh, solvatin containers that are going that are actually making this difference so you are playing uh, the biggest part thank you <laughs> yeah thank you pam and bernard for the interview uh, water quality water and water temperature matters more than imagined if its source is renewable. Billions of tons of carbon emission can be reduced and millions of hectares of forest will be left standing. Can we fill the gap and provide people living in poor regions with quality safe and hot water from the sun? I think the journey continues and I'm convinced that the work to change problems to positive solutions is of utmost importance for now and for the future. Thank you, and, and please, David, if you have some uh, comments to add. <laughs>